Hello everyone, I am Buck Weezer. We're putting the do into do-it-yourself and I've got another video for you on Buck's small engine DIY channel on YouTube and today our video, our DIY project features the 1998 Bounder Motorhome by Fleetwood and I've featured this uh, motorhome in a variety of videos that you might want to check out. It's a beautiful autumn day and today I'm getting around to a project that has been almost a year and a half waiting. That's the last time that we took the RV on a trip <clears throat> and uh, it's time to do some repairs and maintenance on the Onan generator which I have open here in front of us. <clears throat> so let me tell you what we're going to do. And I invite you to scroll through the chapters to the parts that are of most interest or usefulness to you. <clears throat> but I got a variety of things to do today. First of all, the, I've got the Onan Marquee 5500. There's a look at some of the uh, engine information. The model number is 5.5 kilowatt output. And uh, that is what we're working on. It's a really good generator and it works well, but I haven't used it in a year and a half. <clears throat> uh, what I want to do today is, uh, first of all, I'm going to change the oil. Not a big deal about that, but if you look here, I haven't done it since February 26th of 2019. So that's like two and a half years ago. Um, there's not a lot of hours on this generator. At that time, there was 59.7. I don't remember. I should. I got to look at the. Uh, used it a little bit since then, but it's a very low hours. And uh, so I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to rebuild this carburetor. I need to do that, and I'll explain more when we get there. But I'm going to use this kit, this carburetor rebuild kit, which is very hard to come by and stupid expensive. But I'll talk to you more about that and why I need to rebuild it. Um, uh, there's the oil and the filter. I've got a new fuel filter also. And also I've got the official Onan uh, tailpipe hanger right here. Because I need to replace the tailpipe hanger. Which as you can see down here is broken. It's not a big deal. This isn't really going anywhere. It barely moves. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too big of a job to do that. <clears throat> I had this cover off because last time we were using this, which was uh, 17 months ago, we took a cross-country trip, well, halfway across the country, uh, from New Jersey to Oklahoma and Kansas, where I've got two brothers. And uh, the day we were leaving, couldn't get the generator started. And uh, at that time, I ended up taking down the carburetor. And that's why I know it needs to be rebuilt. I, uh, well, we'll come back to that later. So let's get started with the oil change. There's the drain plug. It's not a big deal. There's the filter. I'm going to go about doing that. Not a whole lot to see. But that's going to be the first step that I take today. It's a pretty convenient oil drain valve right here at the base so I'm gonna open that up and just let that drain as long as it wants to pop open the fill cap and uh, maybe it'll drain a little faster that way all right I have a the filter is not on very tight. I observed that. So I can probably just get that off with my hand. It'll drip down this pan. I don't want to make too much of a mess. So I think what I'm going to do is just put a rag under here to catch the uh, spillage. All right. So yeah, looks like I got the part number on there, 
two own in one two two zero six four five but this of course was not the genuine own and this was an aftermarket something or other comparable and the oil filter that we're going to use this time is this one here wix filters five one three seven four so I'm, I'm okay with that so let's let it drain and then we'll take the rest of the steps to replace the filter and fill it up with clean oil all right so <clears throat> we're going to let that oil drain just as long as it wants to and in the meantime we're going to install a new filter now here's how i keep track of oil changes i told you uh i went and looked to see how many hours were on the generator right now and it's 196.9 and uh so i take the card from the oil filter box which will include the number in case i want to look it up again and oil rv gen set oil change 11322 196 hours and i just put this inside in the glove box or with my maintenance stuff so that's one way i keep track of it and then i also write that information on the oil filter itself the date and the hours um, i pre-fill my oil filters that's always a good idea it's also good you got to moisten the rubber uh, gasket so let's get this guy up now that one is a little bit sh this filter is a little bit shorter um, than uh, the one that was originally on there which stuck out a little further which is makes it a little harder to access unless you take the cup front cover off as i have done here and i just like to make it hand tight you can put a wrench on it and take it down a little tighter if you want but generally hand tight is all it takes i really can't get a good grip on that so i might grab a, a wrench and tighten that up just a little bit this card was hanging on the gen set when I got it. Unit contains 15W40 oil. So that's nice to know. Um, I didn't buy that. I actually bought 1040. I think that'll be good enough. I think that's good. I'm not sure the capacity of the crankcase for oil, but looks like we took out about two quarts. So maybe we'll uh, put in that many and <clears throat> then check it. I'm not too worried about overfilling it. The dipstick fill cap is a dipstick and uh, if you put your glasses on you can read it <laughs> all right all right that's pretty good right there I uh, I'm gonna leave it at that I think I put in three and a half quarts Based on how much is left in the five quart bottle, I got a quart and a half left, so that means I put in three and a half more or less. After we get it up and running, we'll check it again and uh, make sure it's good. So that's about how much it takes. All right, very good. Let's move on. All right, so let's think about this tailpipe hanger. It's pretty well rusted, and I'm probably just gonna cut it off with the angle grinder. The new one comes with hardware, the bolts, so it do, I don't need to try to salvage any of them. So I can just snip it off right there or something and be a little easier. And I see up here, if you can see that, it's bolted to the frame there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what size that is, half inch, seven sixteenths. But what I noticed is the hanger, my the, the bar isn't long enough on my new piece. So if I were to put this up there, it wouldn't reach down far enough. So I think what I need to do is use this, at least part of it, 
I'll just cut it off and bolt this hanger to the other one so that it's supporting, you know, because this isn't long enough. It's just too short for whatever reason. And this is still solid. I don't I don't need to uh I don't need to uh get rid of that. We'll just make use of it. All right? So that's the game plan. Let's get going. Did it? Oh. I think it did. Let's see here. Okay. And that guy will come right off. Piece of cake. Chocolate cake. All right, so now I got to go up there and uh, cut that bar off. I think I need to loosen that nut also. I'll do that next. Won't be able to show you that, but it's no big deal. All right, so there's a look at our work. You can see I just piggybacked the new hanger to the old hanger support since the new one was not long enough. And... Uh, really all there is to it. I, all that remains is tightening a little bit, I think. it's pretty secure I mean it was pretty secure anyway um, but now it's how it's supposed to be all right so that job's done I wanted to tell you by the way if you need one of those hangers here's a part number from Cummins slash Onan 0155-2174 okay good job all right, so let's talk a little bit about this carburetor. Like many small engines, these sit for a long time between uses, unless you come out and start it every month, which no one does, I certainly don't, and this hasn't run in 17 months. So fuel that's sitting in the bowl of the carburetor tends to gum things up, and that's the problem. So when I was, uh, last time we took a trip, 17 months ago, this guy wouldn't start for me. And uh, I had to take the carburetor down like I'm going to do now and show you how to do it and I had to clean it out. One of the problems that I ran into is that I didn't have the rebuild kit and the gasket got ruined, the bowl gasket. The carburetor cleaner that I was using sometimes messes up those rubber gaskets. It turned out to be too long. I couldn't use it again. I ended up cutting it, making it shorter, and then using a little bit of uh, silicone, um, RTV silicone. To... <laughs> anyway, it worked, okay? But I know that I need to rebuild this. I've got the rebuild kit that I was telling you about. I'll put it out here, right here. And if you got one of these generators, these carburetor rebuild kits are hard to come by. Now that's the part number, 146-0457. And it doesn't even come with that much. There's that rubber bowl gasket that I need, plus a few other gaskets. It's got this system for the bottom of the carburetor where you can, uh, you can just fl flip this little lever if you're going into high altitudes. That's of no interest to me. I don't care about that really. But anyway, if you look online, like I just did a quick search. If you go to Onan, it's $86 for this little bag of parts but they're sold out. You could also get it at getrvparts.com. They want $120.92. Now there's one guy selling these on eBay for $39.99 and that's what I did. 
maybe this is aftermarket. I don't know if it's the genuine Onan. It didn't come in an Onan packaging. But that to me is the better way to go. And honestly, the only part in here that I definitely need is that bowl gasket. But anyway, so that's the story. And I've been sitting on this for over a year waiting to get around to do this. So let me show you how to do it. Whether you have the gasket kit or not, or you just want to clean out your carburetor because the thing won't start and run, uh, hopefully this will help you. I know carburetor cleaning is not a very, make for a very exciting video, but hopefully this will be of some help to you. All right, so we're gonna take down the air cleaner box. There's a 7 16th uh, nut, hard to get a ratchet on in there. You don't have a lot of room, but you can do it. Then these one, two, and there's a third, 5 16th uh, screws. The one you have to access from inside the pipe little different and so you get the air cleaner all the way and then here's one of those gaskets I think last time I made this one right here yeah I think that's what I did well enough talk let's get started on, on this so oh, one other quick thing so you got a fuel filter right here but for some reason I've got another fuel filter here I don't remember why I did that maybe because these guys are expensive so I'd rather replace this for a much lower cost I don't know. It hadn't been a problem. So let's get started here. All right, seven sixteenths. Take off the air cleaner box. And there's an air filter in there, which I plan to reuse. So you can't take the bolt out by itself. You gotta kinda take the whole thing down. All right, and so here's your air filter right in there. I'll clean out this foam thing. And there's a hose attached to it. It connects back there somewhere. It's just, this, this has a feature by which you can choose summer or winter. In winter time, it uses this air tube to bring some warm air from off the engine to your into your intake. I don't travel in winter, so I've never used that. I just keep it on summer. So he comes out of the way. And then as I said, 5 sixteenths here to take down this intake tube. And the other one is so challenging because you gotta fish it in there half blind to find it. Now, it's not hard so much getting it out, but when you go to reinstall it, oh my goodness, an absolute pain. Um, so as far as small engine carburetor jobs, this one has some features that are pretty frustrating. All right, so let's see if this guy's gonna... I don't know if I got the other one fully loose. Maybe I did. All right. So you don't wanna lose stuff. All right. And there's the third one from inside. All right, I'm just gonna move this guy out of the way for now. All right. So here's our... Here's our carburetor. We got a relay here. I'm not sure exactly how all this works. And we've got an electric choke mechanism. So I'm just gonna unplug that and move that all the way. Let's go ahead and take down this fuel line. Most of the times these carburetors, well, I know these generators, they have a fuel pump. So I may have a little spillage, but I doubt it. Just whatever might have been in the lines. <clears throat> but it's not like gravity fed. And in most of the case, most cases, 
your generator, if it runs on gasoline, pulls the gas from the main uh, RV gas tank. Mine does not, but most of the time they do. So let's just get that guy out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so possibly you can see here, we've got the throttle linkage right here. We'll have to disconnect that. And here's the, they look like 7 16 nuts. One here, one here, and the carburetor will come down when they're removed. But they're just really, really challenging to get a wrench on, to get your fingers on. Getting it off again is easier than putting it back together. But uh, you just got to be patient and take your time and be careful. I know it can be done because I've walked through this frustrating process a couple of times since owning this RV, as we'll do right now. So let's see what we can do here. Like I said, I think this, that's half inch. You know, I don't have a lot of clearance over top. There's not a lot of space to get a wrench on. It's just, it's just tough. But it's not impossible. Just have to allow yourself enough time. And patience to get it done. All right, I got one off. Just dropped, found it. All right, so there's one. And again, everything's easier to take apart than it is put together, right? I can't quite get it. Oh, there we go. You know, so this, this mechanism is in the way. I can't really take it all the way off, except by also backing out the bolt on the other side. And he drops to the ground. Don't lose him. All right, here we go. He comes off. This, I think, I either reused this gasket or made a new one. I can't quite remember. I think I might have made that new one. So this is done, except for our linkages, the thin wire and the, uh, the thicker one. And the carburetor's down. All right. So that's him. And it wasn't too complicated to take down, but... wasn't that easy. It'll be hard getting it back up. I'm going to take it over to the workbench and install that carb kit and clean it out good. And we'll be ready to hang it back up. Let's go ahead and take off this filter. Well, it's not a half inch. It's bigger than that. Oh, nine sixteenths. I got a new one of these. And uh, don't really need it until the end of the carb install. All right, so now at the base of the carburetor, I'm gonna take down this bowl and get a look inside. That's a half inch. I was mentioning to you that it comes with it originally an altitude adjustment thing which I've never messed with see that altitude adjustment there's a setting for 5,000 feet and 10,000 feet and I think all it does is open the uh, main jet here at the base a little bit so if I, I I didn't care about that if I ever need to adjust it I can do that myself with my fingers I, I don't need a don't really travel much 
above sea level. All right, so here we go. Well, interestingly, that still has fuel in it, and it's been 17 months. Looks like maple syrup, doesn't it? So that's kind of nice. It's not too gummed up or dirty in there. I don't feel a whole a, a big need to do a lot of work with it. This gasket is the one that I was worried about. And you'll see that it worked out pretty good because it's right here where I had cut it, fit it in, and then used a dab of silicone sealant to secure it up. It did not leak, it ran fine. All right, so we're gonna empty out this old fuel, clean out that bowl, clean out the, uh, we'll stick a screwdriver up the middle, get out that main jet, spray him out, but I'm not going to, uh, a whole lot of trouble here with this guy because I, I know he works pretty good as is. I'm just gonna do the bare minimum here. Get out my old gasket. Not bad, that, that actually worked pretty good. I was so bummed of course when I realized I had stretched it out it was the day that we're leaving on a trip. There's no way to get another one. And it's still it's still mostly intact, right? It's pretty good. So my stopgap measure for that repair worked worked nice. So here's our kit. It's a new gasket for the bowl. Here's the gasket for the front here, where it bolts up to the uh, to the intake on the engine block. Looks like the other one had a piece of cellophane. Maybe that holds it in place for the install. Get him out of the way. So that. Here's the gasket for the uh, air cleaner assembly. So that's good to have. And the different springs. And this was part of that mechanism for the high altitude adjustment, which I don't plan to use. We have a new gasket for the bowl nut and new needle there and a few other parts. I don't know what this uh, nut and bolt is for. So we want to take this guy down and make sure he's not clogged up with debris or varnish. We got a new bowl gasket, so get rid of that guy. And we just gotta take some spray. Make sure these holes are clear. And uh, I don't see any need to change out that. I'm just going to reuse this guy. And so what we're going to do is kind of tighten it down by hand. And then open it maybe a turn, turn and a half. And once we fire it up, we can adjust that. If we need to open it up a little more or close it a little more. Here's our new gas bowl gasket. So that, that's good to go. 
not using some of these others. It's a new needle. Uh, our float looks like it's it's in good shape. It's nice and level. All right, good. So let me see if I got a screwdriver. We can pull out this. tube that goes up the middle. <sighs> All right, so this is another thing we want to clean out. I want to take a, I'm going to shoot some spray through it and then I'm going to take a pin push it through these tiny holes. Do have some small brushes. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm pleased this is really not as dirty or gummed up as sometimes is the case in a carburetor that sat an engine unused for a long time. All right, I gotta find me a pin and I'll come back and clean those out. And that'll we'll be making good progress. Under this screw here is another small jet. So this guy, this plug unscrews and comes off. And I don't know if I got a screwdriver small enough to go down and get that guy. Uh, looks like I do. See if he wants to come out. Yes, he does. So that's another one that we want to clean out. Make sure all those tiny holes are open. good all right so this is a, a small paper clip and I'm using it to just push through these holes and just make sure that they are clean and clear and open it's not it's not that I'm worried about debris it's just varnish built up from old fuel All right, so that's great. These look a little small. And another option is, I got a guitar string. Yes. So you, you just want to make sure that all of the tiny passages through which fuel must flow are clean and clear and open. See that? All right, that's great. Uh, I think that's all I need to do. And uh, we'll put it back together. It's much cleaner than I expected, thankfully, and we'll be good to go. Our new gasket. My $40 gasket. It's interesting because the other one that I repaired was holding just fine. So, you might want to just be careful if you have one of these carburetors when you open it up. Just keep that gasket away from the carburetor cleaner because those chemicals can deform it. At least that's what's happened to me. All right. Bowl goes back. This guy goes down. Half inch.
All right, and so here's our adjustment. We can adjust that once we get it up and running. All right, I'll meet you back at the RV. All right, so let's see if we can do this without too much drama and frustration. First thing I want to do is hang this intake gasket right there. Next, we're going to take the carburetor and reconnect the throttle linkage. That guy, and also the wire. All right, so this is loose now and it came off the arm all the way in the back. See, like I told you, it's frustration. So I gotta get this spring, the hook, down the other end, back on the governor arms because it came off. Isn't that amazing? So I'm gonna get a flashlight, look down there, and see if I can get it back on. That's just another example of what it is with this. You just gotta take your time. If you, something messes up, walk back slowly, work on it, try again. All right, so I got the uh, linkages on, um, and I've got the gasket back here and a carburetor in place. And now the challenging part will be to get the uh, those nuts started on there. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing. But, uh... these guys back here. So, I'm doing this here at my leisure. Imagine if Imagine if it's the day you're supposed to be leaving for a cross-country trip. You're trying to rebuild this carburetor last minute. Yeah, that was frustrating. All right, I got the one started. It is just... Dropped it. Still have it. There's just uh, dropped it again. Yes, yeah, so getting it started is really, really a challenge. So I'm gonna do that off camera, where you don't have to see me struggle so much or hear me complain so much. But that's 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 just a challenging step because you just have no room. But I'll manage, I've done it before, we'll, I'll do it again, and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to uh, fire this guy up. All right, can't believe it. That rooster, I got it started. It was not easy. I wanna try to tighten it with my fingers and then see about getting a half inch wrench on it. Well, that's good. Man, what a relief. There's such a, it's so, there's just no room. Okay. So that guy's tightened the back one there. And now this guy. Tighten him down. And again, Boy, that's challenging. All right, so I think we about got that. Put the rest of this air cleaner and stuff back together. Our little 
choke mechanism plugs in there. Here's our linkages. And uh, I'll be ready to test it out. Man, that's a challenge. <laughs> All right, we'll put the new fuel filter in place now. Part numbers listed on there. Oh, there it is if you need it. 01492341. That rooster bugging me. Alright. Not gonna connect that quite yet. <laughs> For reasons I don't know, my wife let the rooster, the chickens, run loose this afternoon. This guy likes to hang out over by the RV. Doesn't he understand we're trying to make a video here? All right. <laughs> so, we got a new gasket here for the air cleaner. And two of the screws are easy to get right here. The other we got to do it sort of blind through there. So let's do the easy ones first, right? them down yet and then you gotta just be careful use your 5 16 inch nut driver kind of feel with your finger where it's gonna go here's a trick use a piece of paper to help that help your nut driver grab the screw That might be it right there. Make sure you pull the paper out. You don't want that getting sucked in your carburetor. Okay. Okay, that's good. Tighten these guys. All right, it's time to see about firing this guy up. All right, it's time to see about getting this thing started. Now, I haven't connected the fuel line. And what I want to do is crank the engine with the start switch and prime the pump, so to speak, and catch the fuel. Maybe there's some old fuel in the lines or whatever. And uh, so I just want to see it. I want to see it pulling fuel um, first. Make sure there's no crud in there. Nothing yet. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. So now we're gonna connect it, crank it some more, and uh, let it fill that carburetor bowl. Let's see if he wants to fire up for us. Just give it a minute or two. 
All right, let's take a reading here off the receptacle inside. 122. So that's all right. It's close to where it should be, maybe a scratch high. We can also try, uh, well, no real load on the system yet. Let's, let's turn on the air conditioning and try that. Uh, all right, so it's running our air conditioning. Voltage outputs here at the receptacle still about the same. I wanted to see uh, <coughs> how fast the engine's running. So using my small engine tachometer, we just wrap a few loops around the spark plug wire. According to the engine information, should run at uh, 1800 RPM. So let's fire it up again and see what we get. <laughs> right on the money 1790 1800 it's a pretty handy little gadget yeah this is a, a good running generator it doesn't have a lot of hours on it and I'm really happy with it and uh, now it's even nicer after some of these repairs that we that we were able to do today hey there's my big mug nobody needs to see me that close all right, that's it. I gotta put the cover back on the front here. I'll do that on my own time. Hopefully this was of help to you. Uh, we didn't do any major repairs, oil change, that, that exhaust pipe hanger. We cleaned the carburetor. It's running great. And uh, hopefully that's of help to you if you've got one of these generators. They can be a little bit challenging to work on, um, but take your time and you can you can do it thank you for watching your comments and questions down below in the discussion are always appreciated uh, i've got a bunch of other videos from repairs and projects i've done with this great rv and you might want to check those out and i look forward to seeing all of you guys next time on our next video bye